Welcome to yet another episode of Zander Money on the talk show that gets you talking. I'm Zander Gibb. I'm Zander Gibb. And uh, I will be joined by Typo Ligar is here, but I think we're having some connectivity problems. And I'm here. I'm, hello. Hi. Hi. Ty is here. Hi. And mm. coming up on today's show, we'll be breaking down some of this week's hotter topics. And in part two of the Lusaka report with Tony Lusaka. More to come in a mere moment. You can interact with us during the show in the chat room at the bottom of the show page. Keep scrolling down. Now, if it doesn't let you join in the chat, uh, you need to join with either Facebook or Twitter, and then it will let you get in on the conversation. You can also call us on 347-884-9061. That's 347-884-9061. The number is the same whether you Skype in or you call in. You can even tweet us. You can tweet me at Xander Gibb, X-A-N-D-E-R-G-I-B-B, capital X, capital G. Don't forget the all-important at symbol. And you can also tweet Ty. Ty's Twitter handle is at Ty Paul Egar, T-Y-H-E-P-A-U-L-E-G-A-R, capital T, capital P, capital E. E. You can also tweet Tony. His Twitter handle is at Full Story 2014. F U L L S T O R Y 2014. Tweet me or Ty if you're too shy, and we will make your point for you. Oh, yes, we will. How's it going, Ty? How's your week been? What's, uh, what's hanging? What's going on uh, over there in Glasgow? Glasgow. Well, everything's hanging, darling. I'm I'm hundred. I'm three hundred years old, <laughs> uh, but it's going well. It's good. It's busy. Um, so, I'm, but I'm here. I'm sorry about that. Yes, we had a bit of an audio file, but I'm being told our engineers are working on a solution to the audio file issue. I'm oh, being told. Please. Um, I uh, I really have to get my act together this week and and find another platform because. Um, I don't care if you're listening, Block Talk. I'm really sick to death of 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 how bad uh, things um, really are with this network. There, I said it. We will be going to Freshfield. You said it. Uh, pastures new. We will be finding a platform with both video and um, audio, so you can see us and hear us at the same time. That means I'm going to have to get dressed and put on makeup and. You know, uh, you know, uh, put some face cream and shit on. Oh, I swore. I've, Never I've, mind. Uh, so I've people been doing can that actually since we started. see me. You know, well, you do that even for radio. Absolutely, darling. I'm here on my shirt long as we speak. I thought you did that all the time. I be- I believe you. No, no. I'm I'm just I'm just here in my uh, house coat and curlers and uh, with my slippers. Well, they're flip flops actually, but you know, um, it, it, okay. it's close enough. So before we get to uh, some of the hotter topics of the week, I just wanted to kind of get get a a bit of an idea about what you thought of um, uh, the Caitlyn Jenner stuff this week. Um, Bruce Jenner, former Olympiad Olympiad and athlete and Kardashian playmate, um, went through his transition. Now, he's not fully transitioned. He... I'm sorry, I, I, I'm I'm very unsure what terminology to use because he's not said, I'm a woman, call me a woman. 
he said, I am Caitlin, call me Caitlin. So how 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 do you respond to these changes that Caitlin is going through? Uh and and, and, and what's your response to it all? Well, firstly, um, if, if you're saying call me Caitlin, Caitlin's female name, and the look on the front cover, uh, she's looking fantastic, isn't she? I mean, I know there's a lot of airbrushing, etc., and Absolutely. effects going on there, but looks incredible. I mean, you know, go girl is what I'm saying. <laughs> 65 right. and stunning. Um, I mean, it's a share moment, isn't it, basically? Yeah. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, I, but I mean, we've said. I mean, I think we've said from the beginning. I think you and I can both confidently say we've been nothing but supportive from day one, and I'm going to remain that way. Um, but I think we surely are now moving into the into the realms of she, aren't we? Um, we we are, but we we are. And and for me, the rule is always: I will call you what you what I, I rely on the individual for for what terminology, what vernacular yes. to use um, about them. Uh, I mean, certain people I will choose the vernacular, but that's no, nothing to do with their sex or sexual, sexuality. It's to do with how they behave. Um, but let me ask you this, Ty. I was on a radio show last night, and one of the things we were talking about, they were saying, because Bruce Jenner, sorry, I can't get used to call Caitlin has been hailed as being a hero slash heroine. Do you think that, that obviously it's brave to, to change your... Um, well, I was going to say change your sex, but this person hasn't done that yet. The changes that Caitlin has made is very brave, but do you think that this makes this person a hero or slash heroine or not? No. Um, I think it's, I mean, it's brave, yeah, well done, um, but, but to do it from her, uh, from Kate, right, okay, let's stop saying him, her, we'll just say Caitlin, yeah? So to do it from Caitlin's yeah. platform, um, at 65, I mean, why would go, girl? You know, but that's like saying somebody at, 70, at 65 is learning to play the piano in the sense that it's an amazing thing to take on. It's a big deal. Uh, that, that's, right. that's ridiculous type. But, um, but you know what I mean? I, I mean, she's not, no, no, she's not a heroine. No, it's a very her similar analogy, in fairness. It, I, I but she's not a heroine, no. But, yeah, you know, I mean, there are people who have really been on the forefront uh, uh, for the transgender community who have really um, put themselves on the line and made you know massive changes historically and massive changes politically and massive changes um socially for the transgender community who who are right. heroines and heroes for that matter you know transversely going from female to male uh but caitlin isn't one of them absolutely not um, although i applaud right. her and i support her uh, in her changes but no absolutely not she's not a heroine she's she, she's somebody who is in the media who is lucky enough to have family support and also has you know uh, the uh, money to do uh, it. I'd support that way. Yeah, but I'm absolutely no way would I call her a heroine. No. Right. But, uh, and absolutely. I don't mean that derogatory. You know, or, no, you know, no, I mean, absolutely. I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying boo, but um, but no, I don't. I don't see her as a heroine at all, and I don't think the transgender community would see her as a heroine. I don't think the LGBT community would see her as a heroine. But as you and I have said before, though, I don't think the LGBT community should be condemning her or or attacking her either. I don't think that's all. No. I don't yeah. think that's right, but, but, um, but no, I don't some, think she's, she's the, done anything outstanding. No, some in the trans community um, have, have have basically said that that Caitlin um, does not know, uh, has not experienced the real struggle of a trans person, because most trans people can't afford to get um, the, the surgery done. They can't afford to get their face looking as feminine, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the things I pointed out yesterday, last night, um, was that sometimes, you know, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Um, either they're too su supportive, they're not supportive enough, they don't represent them well enough. Um, I, I, this, this, is the, this is the bottom line for me, Ty. Um, in America, we're supposed to have certain rights, and one of those rights is the pursuit of happiness. And maybe this is just Caitlin's, this is Caitlin's pursuit of, of, of happiness. Uh, what, what, yeah. what, what Caitlin is doing doesn't affect my life. It doesn't affect your life. Everybody's commenting on it. And I, I, I know when people are in the public eye, it invites that. Um, it invites that. But I, I do think um, let's, let's live and let live and move on. She's not doing any harm to anybody. What I don't like no. is the people that are saying, calling her uh, Brulin and shim, and, and, and things like that. Because, because let's be fair, if this individual 
want you to refer to them as she and 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 Caitlin. That is their God given choice. Absolutely. And I think I mean one thing she is doing is highlighting transgender issues and I think that's fantastic because the more people understand how difficult those choices are for people in the transgender community, the better. That can only be a good thing. So in that sense, it's positive. Um, still doesn't make her a heroine, but I still, you know, I mean, that's positive. So, you know, the, right. the more, the better, the merrier. But you're right, yeah, people should just be getting on with their lives. And but the role, we're always going to get people making derogatory terms, aren't you? You know, again, we've said before, you're never going to, you know, there'll always be racists, even though it's ignorant and ridiculous, there'll always be misogynist, et cetera, et cetera. So you've just got to kind of, stamp those people down, wipe them away, and, and you know, like the stains that they are, and, and get on with the cl and cleaning house. But, um, right. but, but, but also emphasize those positives, you know. So, so for young transgender people, or, or, or and older transgender people, there's still hope there, you know, there is. So, so don't think, so for older transgender people out there who maybe thought, oh, I'm too old now, I'm never going to have my chance, she's a fantastic role model in that sense. You know, well, no, you're not too old. Why should you let your dreams go by? Why should you let your life go by? Because this is who you are, um, and and you do right. you do you are you do have a right to be who you really are. You know, it doesn't matter that you 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 know you, you're not 20 anymore, or you're not 30, you're not 40, Absolutely. you're not 50. So from that point of view, you know, I applaud her and and, and, and all power to her. Um, so it is positive in that sense, but yeah, you're absolutely right. On the other hand, well, you know, let's move on because let's not make too much of it in the sense of, well, this is the real world now. This is reality. You know, the LGBT right. community is real. We're here. And as you've said before, and as other people have said quite rightly, why it's not gay marriage, it's just marriage. So things like yeah. this now should become the norm in, in that sense. You know, transgender people are re a reality. They have a right to respect and normal life. So let's accept that and move on and show this as normality, you know, because that's what it is, and 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 embrace it. And and people Absolutely. can't well get some therapy, get over it. And if you and if you really can't, buy an island and go and live together. Nobody cares. Now, one of the things that was quite um, the most shocking thing about all of this, apart from the fact that um, you know that, that one of the Kardashian clan has has a beach body uh, before before the time the, the bikinis are going to be worn is that um, Caitlyn uh, came out uh, most shockingly as being a Republican. Now, for me, what will be most interesting is the way the Republican Party chooses to respond to Caitlyn Jenner. Now, I know that um, Rush Limbaugh, who I really have very little respect for, and not just because he you know, tramples all over the LGBT community, on a daily basis, but I don't care much yeah. for his politics and his demeanor. But he said that 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 Republicans, true Republicans, should reject Caitlyn Jenner. Now, I think that this, I think this is the thing for me. There are a lot of people out there that won't vote Republican because of how they treat the LGBTQ community. This would be an ideal opportunity for them to get. Caitlin on board. Do you think that will happen? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I'd like to think so, but maybe not. I don't know. It depends how afraid they are of each other, really, doesn't it? Who's got the biggest right. voice, he said. Exactly. Um, you know, with, with exactly. air, air, air commas going up. Um, but this would be a great opportunity for, for Republicans to stand up and show themselves, really, wouldn't it, now? To see, because yeah. as you said, you have Republican, you have Republican friends. I have conservative friends. They're not all morons. They're not all idiots. They're no. not all monsters. So now would be no. a really good time for those people to stand up and say, like, right, listen, you might not agree with my politics, but let me, you know, but this is an opportunity for me to say, well, you know, I'm not a homophobic idiot. I'm not, um, I, you know, I, my, my politics have got nothing to do with my morals necessarily. Does that make sense? Right. Um, in the sense that, you know, I agree that, you know, I, I accept all lifestyles. It's just that my politics might not sit where yours do. So this would be a good opportunity for them to stand and say, yeah, I support the LGBT community, you know. Um, but but if, I don't know what will happen. Because at the minute, as, as you've said yourself, uh, I know you've said in, in, uh, in uh, speeches you've, you've made in, in different places and, and talks that you give, that um, I know that politics drive you up the wall at this time of year because, you know, they're all slagging each other off and they're all stabbing each other in the back. Right. Um, and I know it freaks you out. Um, uh, uh, well, it just doesn't freak you out. It makes you angry. 
Um, but I think, you know, sadly, th this time of year is when they all actually have an opportunity to really stand up and say, do you know what, forget what my, my opponent's doing. This is what I want to do for you. This is what I have to offer. But they never do that, do they, really? Unfortunately, at the end of the day, most of them spend this time just, you know, pointing out each other's failings. Um, but it would be lovely, wouldn't it, to think that somebody would stand up and go, hey, you know what? This is what I stand for. This is what I believe. And, um, you know, what Kayleen is doing is great. And what the LGBT community, you know, it, what's happening in the LGBT community is amazing. Um, and these are my politics. So this is why you should vote Absolutely. for me. Not because, not because I, my, I oh, my opponent is, is, you know, whatever. I mean, I really do have to say that I don't necessarily think that, that, the, that the level of support shown from the opposition um, is, is, is always what, what I would call genuine. And I think sometimes yeah. there are ulterior motives to get the gay vote, or you know, some people have suggested that that Obama's um, uh, attempts to to fix the immigration problem have been more about getting the Hispanic vote. And and and, and I, yes, you could call that cynicism. You know, maybe it is, but I, I think these are all things that that do have to be addressed, really. Yeah, well, absolutely. Uh, but let's address them, you know, but that's what I mean. And I know that's what makes you kind of angry is, is you know, they, they don't, they, I mean, instead of addressing that, saying, do you know what, this is what I'll do, isn't it? This is the, and they do it over here, of course, they do it everywhere. Well, they certainly do it in the UK and America, you know, instead of spending the time saying, look, this is what I'll do, they spend the time stabbing each other in the back. Uh, or, yeah, or saying, saying who you know, did what and, and when and why. Yeah, and playing on people's fears, playing on the nation's fears and saying, look, I'll do this and, and, and you know, going into neighborhoods where they know there's homophobia, for example, and, and winding that up and saying, yeah, we'll get rid of the queers. Um, or, or going into, a, you know, a Catholic a Catholic uh, majority and saying, yeah, we'll get rid of the provies, whatever, or, or worse, you know, uh, under their breath. Right. But, um, it, it, you know, instead of, of, of doing what's right. And as far as Obama, I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm assuming he's had a mental breakdown and nobody's noticed. God only knows what that man's up to. Um, over the past eight years, he's, he's just lost the plot completely. Um, but then I think it personally, uh, it is. But I think there was a kind, there was kind of really we should have known there was a kind of an insta a, 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 a clue when he first took power because he accepted the Nobel Peace Prize for doing nothing, uh, just being a black man in the White House. I don't really see warranted the Nobel Peace Prize, but. Um, but there you go. You know, I personally would have humbly said well, thank you very much. That's an amazing offer, but I haven't actually done anything to deserve that. Um, well, to me, to me it's insulting something. for him to be. For me, it's insulting for him to be given the Nobel Peace Prize, given the way that he's treated Israel. Now, Israel has been an ally of the United States and the United Kingdom, and there he is, um, sitting down, breaking bread with Israel, and looking at deals about how much money we can give them to make them behave. Screw that. Why should they get my, my hard-earned taxpayer dollars in order to, uh, to not cause problems for us? You know what? Here's the thing. This, we're America, and we're a strong country. If you cause problems for us, we'll, we'll frickin' nuke you. We'll bomb you. That's always <laughs> been the way that it's been done in the past. Fair enough. I'm not going to pay. Might be a bit strong. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it just makes me angry because don't, don't say that this – you can't say that this man is a, a a man of peace when he's negotiating with terrorists. You know, we the, no, the biggest yeah, thing. Absolutely. The biggest thing for me is that we've always said as a, a nation in America is that we will not negotiate with terrorists, and that's all we've done during this administration. That's all we've done. And and here's the concern: um, if we go lightly on terrorists and and countries that oppress us. It makes us look weak. So the next time a bigger country comes along to uh, to attack us, to, to be aggressive towards us, we're going to just be walked right over because we've shown weakness. Well, yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a dangerous place to be. I agree. Um, but then when you, I mean, when you first told me, I mean, when that hit the world press, um, I, I think that freaked most people out. Really, that. Um, that, that he'd actually done that um, because, it, it, well, I still, still, I still stumble over words um, for for him doing that was um, it was unreal. I couldn't believe it. Absolutely, it, it was. Words still fail me for that. 
Absolutely. So let's go on to uh, one of our uh, hot topic issues today of the day. Um, a flight attendant who refused to give a Muslim passenger an unopened can of soft drink, no free advertising on our show, for hygienic reasons, uh-huh. uh, allegedly telling her it could be used as a weapon um, and that they will be no longer serving uh, uh, drinks in cans for customers. Now, they apologized for what happened to Tahira Ahmad's shuttle America flight from Chicago to Washington, D.C. last week and pulled the flight attendant from serving customers in the future. Shuttle America is a regional airline affiliated with United. Now, um, one a statement from them said, after invading, investigating this matter, United has ensured that the flight attendant, a Shuttle America employee, will no longer serve United customers. The company added in its statement, United does not tolerate behavior that is discriminatory or that appears to be discriminatory against our customers or employees. Now, the same flight attendant allegedly served an unopened can of beer to another passenger. However, that could not be corroborated. When she confronted the attendant, she said, it's against our policy to give people unopened cans of beverages because they may use it as a weapon. So she said, well, I think that's strange because you're discriminating against me because clearly you gave a passenger in the same row as me an unopened beverage can. And so she looked at that, picked it up, and put it back. And she was, as she was putting it back, she said, it's because you would use it as a weapon. But that's not what was that was not what was reported by people that were around. Now United Airlines initially claimed the incident was a misunderstanding and that the company said that they noted that all employees for Shuttle America who deal with customers undergo undergo uh, ha 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 cultural training, sensibility, sensitivity training, and United will continue to work with their partners to deliver a service that reflects that cultural awareness. Now, where to begin with this, Ty? I mean, it it, it defies, it, what can you do? Well, they've, just, they've panicked about, they've just gone, oh, she said racist. So they've, done, they've just panicked, haven't they? Um, right. It, basically, that's it, isn't it? I mean, and, I do believe she would uh, say, uh, you, story... you will use it as a weapon. I can't give you a can of soda because you will use it as a weapon. I don't believe someone would be silly enough to say that. Do you? No. Um, it, well, I, not unless she has been unless she was having some kind of breakdown. Why would you? Um, you you would have to be really. I mean, no. I'm not buying that for a second. I think that's been the accusation to justify the complaint, um, and that's what's happened. And instead of the airline defending their their employee, they've just panicked because um, because of, of, of a racist accusation. Um, as we do so often, we uh, we panic and go, oh my God, and and that's it. And I think it's been, I, I think that's outrageous. And why? I mean, as we said as well, why would I? I wouldn't want aluminium flying around an aircraft. Thank you. I, as I, I would much rather, if there was turbulence or anything going on, I personally would rather be hit in the face with a plastic cup than an aluminium can. So if, apart from being used as a weapon, I would have thought it would just be dangerous. Um, in case of, you know, accidents, turbulence, whatever, I'm not suggesting that airplanes just randomly fall out of the sky, or, well, unless you're in Asia. But it's just, I, I don't understand the, um, well, well, I'm just saying, would you, right, I wouldn't get, I'd be hesitant to get an airplane in Asia, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I'll, obviously, we're not saying that's under my door, that's just my personal opinion. Um, but uh, I, I thought, I just, I just, um, I'm a comedian, think, you know, check my bio. Yeah, I was going to say, I am obviously being flippant to me. Um, so, I just think it's a bit ridiculous, yeah. But they, they, they panicked. Instead of, when they should have supported their staff, they panicked. Right. Uh, and, and, this has become, and this has become an incident that shouldn't have become an incident. Absolutely. I mean, this is the thing. If the, if this, if the policy is that on an airplane, that the, the, the passengers will not be given the drink in a can, you know that they will pour the drink for you and then give it to you. It, I mean to say to say that she shouldn't have done that if it was policy. That's the first ridiculous thing for me. The second thing is um, she wanted it in a can for hygiene reasons. 
what did she what did she think someone was going to do spit in the can or you know because when i mean you know and i've anytime i've ever been on an airplane and they've served me a drink they've poured it in front of me they don't they don't pop off to their galley to to pour you a drink no they bring it well also you know they they do yeah, it and there also, apart from and also apart from that um the can will be unhygienic because it's been stored. God knows what's been around the top of the can. Yeah. And when I and touched and, and you know I, yeah. And also, as you know, I used to manage bars and and pubs and things. And the first thing you would want to do is get rid of the can because also in transit, etc., you would get urine, you would get uh, rodent urine on those. You would get all sorts of yeah. disgusting things on a can. Exactly. So the last thing you would want was the can. Exactly. So, I mean, yeah. well, I, I, I'm I'm all for respecting everybody, but but and and you know. I, don't don't call in and tell me I'm anti-Muslim because, you know, if you knew me, you would actually know nope. that I'm no. definitely not. Um, but but here's the thing for me: to expect that you should be treated differently because you're a Muslim, we've lost something along the way. If if that's what the message we've given you, the whole ideology of of of, of affording rights to different sections of the community is about equality, and if you want more rights than other people then that is not equality, and I can't hold truck with that. No. No, and you, uh, and well, this, is it, this is, it's, it's a tragedy that now everything, you know, if you're saying anything at all, oh, it's racist. Um, it, it's yeah. absurd to, to, that that has become the point, you know, as then, well, so free speech is now a racist attitude. Um, Absolutely. No, it, 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 it's, not, it's not acceptable. Well, I'm a You've homophobe, got to be able to apparently. speak up. Well, I'm I am a homophobe. homophobe. Yeah, absolutely. I, I because, personally never liked I homosexuals. Think, but... No, couldn't eat a whole one. Um, I, I got into trouble <laughs> because I said, um, it's abs- I, I've not said it's acceptable, but if, if you provide a service, and for any reason you decide you don't want to provide that service to someone, to then be forced to do so is slavery. And and because I said that I'm homophobic, because you should be forced to serve homosexuals. Why? Yeah. Well, I, well, who knows? I mean, I, I but <laughs> I've been forced to serve homosexuals before. It didn't do me any harm. So I'm. And saying. how much were they per pound? Well, you know, well, that's between me and my <laughs> between me and my wallet <laughs> here. <laughs> but it, it, <laughs> anyway, moving on. Is this legal? Yeah, moving on. Are we on? Are we live? Are we recording this? Can we edit it? Um, we are. So that, you see, never do a live show with Xander Gibb. That's all I'm saying, folks. Um, but, it's, but it is. It's just absurd to, to put. And what's happened to this poor woman now? I mean, what's going to happen now if anybody says, uh, do you know what? I would just run up and down the aisle going, what do you want? Absolutely. You can have anything you want. You want it in a can? Here. I'll just knock it off the back of people's yeah. heads. Yeah. You know, I mean, what is it you're saying? Because somebody is 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 going to make so what's next going to be uh, unless if you're not white you can have anything you want is that the issue or or uh, hang on a minute I'm Jewish I don't like the way she looked at me well excuse me I'm a homosexual pagan I don't think you know right. I want a, I want a sheep and I want it now I mean you know it, it, really well so yeah you'll have to do a segment is, on homo paganomics sometime on the show Ty you really will okay. That can be arranged. Um, so, so on a, on a serious note, um, I mean, I, for me, the only question about this is if she did give it to some, if she did give a canned beverage to someone else, then she shouldn't have done that. But maybe a colleague did that by mistake. But if that if that happened, then I can see why the woman would be up in arms. But it wasn't necessarily because she was a Muslim. She might have just been a bitch. I'm sorry. Well, absolutely. But also, though, if another member of staff gave a, 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 a customer a drink in a can and she was told that you shouldn't, then it's down to the, the, the airline to make sure that their training is, is in place properly. Absolutely. So they shouldn't have been moving her around. They should have been saying, right, hang on, our training isn't in place properly. We need to sort this out. And then they should have had a training session with the staff saying, look, this is how it should be. And it should be, um, it, everybody should be in, on board with that. So you know, again, that you know that, that shouldn't be her being being um, punished for that. That should that's the the, the manager's responsibility to make sure Absolutely. everybody is in sync. So you know, 
It's not, it's not on. And I think, you know, we have to give it a bit of an extra thought for people in the service industry because, uh, you know, I, I know I, I know um, air, people that work for airlines, and they're all puffs and lessies, of course. Um, that's a, that's a, uh, that, that's a <laughs> line from uh, the Fast Show. Um, I, I know that they're that by the time they finish their shift, that all they want to do is sit down because they're on the feet for a long for a long time, yeah. and they're not always going to get it right. I'm not saying that excuses rudeness or or, or or bad service, but I think you know we have to be considerate to people in the service industry. I think some people treat them like crap, and, and when I see that, I, I I have to say something. You know, it's fair enough; those people are there to serve you, and they're there to assist you. But don't treat them like slaves, please. You know? No, absolutely not. You know, the, the, hello, welcome. You know, my name's another human being. You know, definitely. That has always yeah. freaked me out. Um, it, and it, 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 it's, it, I don't know where people get off thinking, believing that. You know, it's just I've paid for this seat, therefore you are my servant. Um, no, I don't think so. The best one. You know. The best one for me is for when people say to to police officers, "I pay your wages." Uh, I mean, if I was a cop, I would want to punch someone in the face for saying that to me. Because, no, you don't pay me your ma- you, my wages. The, maybe the taxes you pay go towards paying my wages, but that does not give you a right in telling me how to do my job. No, well, actually, I've had that because I work for social services and people have shouted that, you know, so I pay your wages and I just shout that, well, I pay yours. I'm a taxpayer as yeah. well, you moron. The government pay our wages. Yeah. Where do you think yours come from? You know, I mean, really. Get a job. Get a <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I can't remember where Lily Travis is. <laughs> yeah, give me that style Get a job. Oh, yeah, well, well, that was her line, wasn't it? Oh, oh, yeah, what, my my story. Um, no, I was just thinking about yeah, the, Lily, the Lily Savage line. One of my favorite li- uh, co- uh, comic punch lines from Lily Savage was, you know, she walked past a homeless guy in the street. She said, I haven't eaten in three days. She said, well, fucking force yourself. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, my story. Well, I'm back to the Duggar. No, no, do we not have to make a comment about the Duggar family? Yeah, I, 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 think, I think it needs to be said, and I, I shared this um, on the radio show I was on last night, that, that, that some of the commentary that I, certainly that I made last week was um, based upon um, incorrect information. Now, what had actually been suggested was that Michelle Duggar had said that that trans men were pedophiles. Now, what she'd actually said was, her objection was, and this is something we've discussed on the show before, was with reference to male genitalia, whoever it was attached to, being on display in front of children. So if that makes Michelle Duggar a bad person, aside of the other stuff, we're going to talk about the other stuff, if that alleged commentary makes her a bad person and, and his is her saying is allegedly her saying that, that trans men are pedophiles, then, then you could accuse me of being guilty of the same thing. That's not what she said. Her commentary was that she didn't want to have children subjected to male genitalia, whoever it was attached to. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but that was basically yeah. what, what she said. Yeah. And, and we as the and, um, community had been fed that line. Yeah. And, and and it's not you taking you. I mean, you report, but we both take responsibility for this show when we're on it. So we both, you know, we both uh, shared that story. Um, so we're correcting it, uh, you know, because obviously we go around having a go at the world for telling stories, and and so we got that slightly wrong. Um, and we agree with that. And as you pointed out before, that well, Dan said a very similar thing a couple, was it a couple of years ago. That um, yeah, uh, yeah, and she was accused of being a transphobe. And of course, none of us. Yeah. And of course, whether you, I mean, it's got nothing to do, that's like the racist thing, isn't it? It's got nothing to do with your gender. Children should not be subjected to uh, seeing the genitalia of, of, of adults being, you know, in, in, that, in that kind of situation, full stop. So we agree completely. But um, the reason we're back on the Duggar family for me, or the Duggar family, I don't know how you pronounce it in America, but I pronounce Duggar. it Duggar. Because my, the title of my story is Duggar Me, because right. I read this and I thought, really? You, you, what? Yeah, it rhymes with bugger. Yeah, that I, because I read this and thought, seriously. And again, I've taken this from a Fox News uh, story. Um, I can't remember the name of the, of the journalist. I'm sorry, I will get it on the next week's show. But uh, but I've taken these parts, apart from my Megan comments, Kelly. obviously. I've taken these. 
Yes, right. So I've taken these. They are not out of context. This is what was said, but obviously I've, I've, I've shortened this because it was a huge interview. But I actually read this um, and realised that I was reading it with my mouth open because I, I just thought, you've got to be kidding, really. So this is, this is what I, I read from this. Okay, so reality TV star Jessa Duggar told Fox News Channel on Wednesday that she was a victim of her, her older brother, Josh Duggar, who fondled five girls when he was a teen. Jessa Duggar, featured like her brother in the family's TLC series, 19 Kids and Counting, told Fox in an interview conducted in Arkansas on Wednesday that she wanted to defend him. She said, allegations he's a child molester or paedophile are so overboard and a lie, Fox reported. The Duggar parents told Joss, said that Josh Duggar, who is now 27, which is fair enough, fondled four of his sisters and a family babysitter when he was a teenager and confessed to them. The fondling, and confessed to them, the fondling was done over the girls' clothes and except in two cases happened when the girls were asleep. Jim Dob, Bob Duggar said, I would do anything to go back to the, those teen years and take different actions, <coughs> excuse me, Duggar wrote online, in my life today I am so very thankful for God's grace, mercy and redemption. Are we saying here, folks? She said the fondling devastated her and her husband and made them question whether they had failed as parents. He's so very sorry, Michelle Duggar said in the interview, wiping away tears. That would be the bigotry and denial of guilt, sweetie, as far as I'm concerned. Jim Bob Duggar said that before the investigation, he had taken Josh Duggar to a Christian counsellor and separately had to told them stories to the state police officer near their home. As far as I'm saying, hallelujah, go sing it to the mountains. God has forgiven the molester for he's a heterosexual. We had told, excuse me, we had all resolved it. We had forgiven. We had moved on in life, Michelle Duggar said. Jim Bob Duggar said, the family is fine. Whether they film us or not, we will just go on and live our lives, he said. We're going to go on and serve God and make a difference in the world. Well, you've already done that, Jim Bob, by giving the Lester's permission to talk to God about options. Michelle Duggar said her daughters, I quote, have been victimized more by what has happened in the last couple of weeks than they were 12 years ago because, honestly, they didn't even understand and know that anything had happened until after the fact when they were told about it. So they will get that. According to Michelle Duggar, if they're not sure what's happening, it can't be that bad. After all, they're red-blooded heterosexual Americans, and at the end of the day, Josh is really sorry, and he told his Christian counsellor so. So grab your banjo and a six-year-old and have at it. There's a TV show with your name on it just waiting for you, and who knows, maybe the Duggars will sponsor you. That's my story for the day. Wow. Well, you know, and I, I have think... to say... Go on. Go. No, go for it. I was just going to say, I have to say, first of all, I'm 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 all for forgiveness, but I think... The, the the reason why this has been highlighted so much is that they've they've put themselves in the public eye, and and people are are going to comment on on your life and and that kind of thing, but I do want to point out that the that the the people that brought this um, the company that brought this uh, story uh, that are behind In Touch magazine, which is where this all appeared in in the first place, are actually being sued. Uh, they're called ba Bauer Media, and they're actually being sued right yeah. now by Tom Selleck um, because of comments they'd made about him that were not factual. And and you know, I'm I'm not excusing anything that this guy has done because it, it, it's there's no excuse ever for 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 this kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> was it pedophilia? I I, I don't know because normally for me it's pedophilia. It kind of gives you the impression it's an adult and a child. You could say that two children were experimenting, but a 14, I think a 14 year old should know better personally. But that's just my opinion. Well, for me, I'll tell you why I, I wanted to report this. Okay. What the things that disturbed me about this, okay, were, and, and, I'm, yeah, and we know, um, well, you, you know, the, the magazine. Uh, or, the, or the, the agent, the, the company, report not necessarily things, but these are taken from a Fox interview, okay, these quotes from Michelle. But the things that disturbed me about it, okay, she's saying he's not a paedophile or, or a molester. Now, he's 27 now, so those are inflammatory words because he's 27 now. He was obviously 14 or whatever um, right. when this happened, and his sister, you know, was younger. But um, what does it for me is the fact that she's saying they didn't understand what was happening. So she's diminishing what happened because she's saying they didn't understand it. Well, that's the whole point of molestation and pedophilia is that the baby, the child doesn't understand what's happening. That's how the pedophile gets away with it or the molester gets away with it. Right. First, you know, and also she's diminishing it. 
and also what concerned me and what angered me about it is, why does it matter that the council is Christian? I'm a councillor. It doesn't matter what my denomination is. It doesn't matter what your denomination is. Who gives a toss? What, you know, why not just a councillor? So again, all he's spoken to God. That's why I'm saying, hallelujah, go sing it on the mountain. He's sorry God's forgiven him. And also, who told him, who said that these kids were asleep? Because it wasn't the kids who were asleep. So how do they know? Because that report was saying, how you know, do they know that it happened? Kids, yeah. Right. How did they know that. that these kids were asleep? Do you know what I mean? There are That's unfortunately a lot of inconsistencies with this, Ty. And, and I don't think we will ever know um, what it was about. You know, as some of it, as some of it being inflamed by the media, yes. I'm, I'm actually quite angry with the media that they've reported that she has said this. Um, and the whole LGD, LGBT... Ugh, I can't get I can't get the, get over the acronym. I'm sorry. I, I it's still LGBT to me. Um, well, can I just tell you? They're all up in arms about I, it. Go on. But also, can I just say, as far as Voyage is concerned, I will speak for my by Voyager. It will always be LGBT. Okay, there'll be no letters added on because that's it. Absolutely. The lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community. We are not going to become a waste and strays community. All right. I'll make that very clear. Right. That's what Pride Voyage. Okay. LGBT. I, well, if, okay. well, if if they're being inclusive, I want them to add X to that, too, for me, for Xander. Sorry. I, otherwise, it is Xanderphobic. If you do not add X to the acronym, Sorry. it is Sorry. You have your own. You have your own frigging banner on the, the landing page. What more do you want? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about in general. The world. But moving, the world. Absolutely, the world. But moving swiftly on, it's time to bring our... Uh, our uh, segment host on Tony Lusaka, who is a broadcaster, writer, and free thinker. His uncommon approach to the world around him gives him a unique perspective to seek out and share uh, the full story. Joining us once again for the Lusaka Report is Tony Lusaka. Welcome back to the show, Tony. How are you doing? Thanks, Andrew. I'm doing great. Good. Hi, it's, Tony. It's uh, great to have you. Hi, Ty. Now, just before we move on to your second two of the things we've been talking about today, just want to get your uh, opinion very quickly. We've, we've been talking about Caitlyn Jenner and the Duggars. Now, I saw something you put on social media today, and I'm not going to try and crucify you about it, but you said <laughs> basically the same as what's-his-name had said. I can't think of his name. Uh, Josh from Drake and Josh. Josh Anyway, whatever the name is, whatever his inconsequential name is, you said um, his name is Bruce, and I'll always call him Bruce. So tell us quickly, first of all, your response to the Caitlyn Jenner stuff, and then we'll give you a little minute to talk about the Duggar situation before you come on to your story. <laughs> Well, Xander, I guess you're going <laughs> to get me into that conversation we had the other day. Didn't expect this. Okay. Well, you know what? Um, I do separate, and you said I have a unique perspective. I do separate LGBT issues. As I've said before, I do not believe they're the same thing. There's right. lesbian, gay, and bisexual, and they're transgender, and I believe there's two totally different things. And I realize that People attack homosexuality, saying it's unnatural and it's an abomination. But you know what? That's a choice. Who you sleep with in your bedroom is a choice. You are free to do that, just like I'm free to put on one shirt or another shirt. It's a, cho it's a choice of what you're doing. I don't see anything right. wrong with it either way. However, you're born with certain body parts, Okay. I mean, you can oh, call yourself. Right. You, can, you right. can go. You can you you can get a surgery to alter that and change that all right. you want. But to me, you're either going to be a male or female because that's the way you were born. No different than if somebody said they were a unicorn and surgically put a a a, a horn on their head and said, "I was born to be a unicorn." Okay, that's oh. nice. That's great for you, but you're always going to be a human being. <laughs> you're not right. But this you're is, not but a this unicorn. Is the beauty. This is the beauty of Xandermonium, Tony, that we don't all have to agree and we don't all have to have the same opinion because part of the philosophy is the show of the show is we should not have to conform 
to a certain opinion to be part of a particular group. So 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 that's okay. Now now Ty's saying whoa and but <laughs> Ty would still be the first one to say that you're entitled to your opinion. Well, and no, let me I'm, clarify actually, just, just a little, let, me, uh, let me just clarify yeah. one thing before I do get crucified though. Okay? <laughs> I think gender uh, gender gender identity is a separate issue, okay? Gender right. is a society construct, okay? If I want to play with dolls or I want to wear a dress or whatever, these are things that change with society over time periods. Like I said, you know, we would think the people in the 1800s, the guys were fruity today, you know? So gender, I'm not, I'm not including gender. You have the right to do what we consider in a society feminine things all you want. I'm talking about the physics of the physical body and sexually altering who you were naturally made and saying, oh, no, I was born in the wrong body. Like I said, that's what I don't buy. I, I'm not saying femininity right, okay. or masculinity. There's a difference, okay. and, I, and I do well, distinguish you know, there. Okay, well, do you know what we need to do? Definitely, okay. Because that, what I was saying was, oh, I wasn't going, oh, I wasn't, well, I wasn't doing a pantomime boo. I was saying, oh, I get what you're saying. I wasn't understanding exactly what you were saying at first, and then it, do, it the penny dropped. Do you know what I mean? I understood what you were saying, Tony. <laughs> But what we'll have to do, right, the three of us, we've got to advertise this. The three of us are going to have a massive, what, we're going to have one show, the three of us, and it's going to be a debate on this, I think. And that's what we've got to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Because, well, oh, my God, we have not, because I want you to do your reports on it, because I always look forward to your reports. And, we've got, and, and we're gonna, we would use, oh, my God, no, we, we, we will, it will be a whole show, Tony. You and I alone debating this will be a whole show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so very quickly, because so, yeah. I want you to get the time for your report, Tony. Tell us, yes. tell us in, 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 a, in, in a few sentences what your response to the Duggar situation is. Oh, the Duggar situation that's a tough one. I understand where they're coming from, from as a family. In fact, organizations do it all the time. They hush things up, they put their dirty laundry under the table, and they don't want it out in public. But I, I have to agree with what I've seen in the media, which is, well, once you put yourself out in public, same thing with the Jenner situation, actually. Once you put yourself out, just like I'm doing right now, you know, if somebody were to go not like what I just said and post something from my past. Not that I have anything in my past. Please don't look. <laughs> all over, all over the, all, all over national news. Well, you know what? I, by becoming a public figure, I just opened myself up to that. So I do think it's yeah. fair game, but I understand why they wanted to keep it privately. And right. also, the whole Christian virtue thing and hypocrisy does come into play. You can't, you can't, you can't. Put yourself out there as completely moral and criticize others if you have something there not so right yourself. Absolutely. That's my view of it. Absolutely, and, that, and that's pretty much in a nutshell. You know what what we uh, what we have uh, what we have said. So Tony, what have you brought for us today? What what gem of wisdom have you brought to throw into the uh, into the uh, arena today? Well, actually, Xander, I was telling you that I was going to speak about Rand Paul and his courageous stance with the Patriot Act. But um, as I looked more into things, I think that it's time to explain to everybody how one can be a libertarian and what that really means. And what got me to right. that point was I actually watched George Pataki's video, his campaign video, little-known candidate from New York State, However, I helped elect the guy, and we didn't think he was electi electable at the time. He's what's called the last As an ex Rockefeller Republican. Yes, ex Governor Pataki, right. and he's the last of what they call the Rockefeller Republicans, actually. Right. And the interesting thing about George Pataki is I heard what he was saying, and he sounded more libertarian than Rand Paul. And I thought it was time to clarify a little bit of politics and what everything stands for and doesn't and how things have changed just within the past 10 years. Um, the Republican Party has morphed, and this is where you're getting the full story, so to speak. It has become radicalized and controlled by radicals, evangelical, conservative, Tea Party radicals. You're not allowed to be a moderate anymore in the Republican Party. And, and 
Pataki probably doesn't stand a prayer because of that. But the thing is, the Republican Party started out against big government and empowering people to help other people. Ronald Reagan, for instance, took stances basically pro-immigration, bring them on in. America is the land of dream, hope, and opportunity, talking about what creates the best of America and becoming the best. And, and, and that was basically the Republican Party of years ago. Now what's happened is you've had a certain ideology hijack the Republican Party, and that's why I think you see the Libertarian Party growing, and I do admit a lot of Libertarians are former Republicans, because we're not concerned about school prayer, morality, or what somebody does in their bedroom. We believe in live and let be. And the whole point of being the Republican to begin with was we didn't want government intruding on our lives. We thought government had grown too big, and people should be helping each other, and people were the solution, and we could come up with ideas and solutions to our problems together, finding the best of America. That was the concept. However, what's happened is they are trying to force a moral extreme agenda on America, and I honestly don't see any hope for the Republican Party. at that. I really honestly do not see any hope for the Republican Party at this point. Now, the thing is, people ask, well, how can you be a Christian and a libertarian? And I, I've gotten this a lot. It, or how can you be a gay Christian libertarian? There's a mouthful for you. <laughs> <laughs> gay Christian libertarian. I, I might be the only one in existence. I'm not sure. Wait, you're gay, but, Tony? <laughs> yes. Now, here, here, here's how I can be that, Okay. If you go back even to the book of Genesis, there's a value in Christianity that's not talked about very much. But it was the value that Jesus Christ espoused the most. Freedom. Freedom. When God right. created Adam and Eve, he created them with free will to decide. Yes, he had laws and rules, but he could have created robots or servants just like you see in these alien movies or slavery. He did not have to give us choice. Free will and freedom is the highest moral. That's where the founders of the Declaration of Independence were coming from. We are created by our creator with inalienable rights, the rights to life, liberty, justice, and the pursuit of happiness. That's as Christian as Christian can be. The idea of that is you should live your own life to a moral standard, upholding God's will for your life. So, so let me ask I you something believe... at that point. Yes. Let, sorry, let me just interrupt you very quickly, Tony, because I'm sure a lot of people are thinking that. How then can some Republicans have got it so wrong? Well, actually, there's a lot of history, and I can tell you as an insider to the party back in the day when they got elected. In the early 90s, uh, the Republicans had not had control of anything for a while. It was very Democratic. Newt Gingrich put together the contract with America, along with people like Pataki, but it was moderate. If you remember back in the presidential campaign, Newt Gingrich took a few stances, and he just brutally lost the primaries after that. He talked about right. space exploration and going to outer space, and he said, I'm not going to split up families. They're coming to America for hope or opportunity. That was the end of his presidential campaign. That's how right. extreme the Republican Party had become, and it's gotten worse now. Yeah. What, what's happened is people put together a party and a coalition, but in the process, you had a new generation come along, and they hijacked those values and those ideals, and now you've got a bunch of extremists running the party, and, you know, I might as well call it for what it is. It's the evangelical Christian right. I mean, I'm trying to tiptoe around it. But the reality That's is fair it's the evangelical <laughs> Christian right where they added, oh, okay, see, it, back, back in the early platform, the idea was we're going to stay away from things. There was like a 60% rule, I think. If 60% of the American people didn't approve it, we're not putting it on the party platform. So we're not going to espouse school prayer. We're not going to get into gender issues. We're, we're not getting into these areas they don't belong there let's just find this common ground we can all agree a united america strong national defense 
less government, more power to the people, welfare reform. That's how it started. And then, it, like anything else, it grows and it balloons. You get people in there that add this and add that and add that. And that's kind of what's happened. It's become corrupted. But if you give more, but, but okay, so, but what, right, this is what concerns me. Oh, sorry, not concerns me, confuses me though, Tony. Right, okay, so, because you're, you're, but you're talking about giving more power to the people and separating the politics, which I'm all for, before I say any, if anything else. Okay, let me, that, let me make that very clear. Um, I'm definitely up for more power to the people. But then how do you continue to separate that, though, when it comes to control? And I don't mean control of the people. I mean controlling things sensibly and, and separating that. How do you do separate God and country? Because everybody's going to then, because, Christian, because for me, religion is the big evil in the world. And I say, I say religion, not faith. All right. That's when everything starts to fall apart. Politics and religion are the two big evils in the world. So how do you find that balance when you say, well, we're going to give more power to the people, but we're not going to involve their faith? Because you can't not involve their faith. How? Because how, how? you can't now. You're talking about it now. And you can't help talking about it other than as a Christian, because that's a huge part of your soul. It's a part of your consciousness. Well, if I'm understanding you, Ty, correctly, the solution is in... Um, in action. There are plenty of presidents in the past, for instance, who prayed in the Oval Office for guidance, okay? But they didn't advertise it. Yes, your faith is part of who you are, who, how you live. If somebody shows up at my door homeless, for instance, okay, I'm not necessarily going to turn them away. That's my faith living out. You know, I might go the extra mile for somebody at my job. That's my faith in action. Our faith or in theological terms, they like to call it worldview, governs each of our decisions, like you said. There's no getting around that. You know, who we are is based on what we believe, and what we believe is based on our worldview. So that governs every single decision we make in one way, shape, or form. The key is to keep the government out of that. For example, I'm really into George Pataki right now, if you couldn't already tell. Um, he, he said... <laughs> His position right now on homosexuality is, and he passed some pro-gay rights laws in New York State under him, okay? His position is, I don't agree with the Supreme Court. I think this issue should be left to the states to decide. This isn't a federal issue. It's a states' rights issue. Now, on the surface, okay. you would say, say, whoa, that's anti-gay or not gay rights or whatever. No, the man supported gay rights legislation in New York. What he's saying is he's taking a political stand, saying, wait, the federal government doesn't belong telling the states what to do. But as for him himself, he doesn't think the government should belong in our bedrooms. So there right, are ways right. to separate these things. Okay. Um, I can pray as a Christian, for instance, before a national assembly or bow my head, but that doesn't mean I have to pass a law forcing a public prayer before a national assembly. And that's how you separate the things. That's cool. That works for me. I just wanted to understand that. But, cause, because what, but the problem is, then, what we actually need, so I would vote for you, not necessarily him, because what we actually need are people that are capable of doing that. And the problem is we don't have pay people who are capable of doing that right now. What we have are people that use that. Not. You know, and we, no, have, and we have people... That, Go ahead, Ty. I'm sorry. No, I was just, that was it. I was just, but I was just going to say, you know, unfortunately, we have people that use um, religion and make it that that well, make it that darkness and make it that evil that people are afraid of, and make it um, and make it a weapon uh, at the moment. And that's the problem. That's you know the, the thing that um, that I think people fight against uh, or are afraid of now. You know, it has become that that war between, particularly between the LGBT community. And and, uh, and the Christian community, which the, which I think Zandra and I were talking about, which I think the media is responsible for. Yes, um, definitely. You know, it, 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 it's, it's become that war, you know. But unfortunately, politics and religion have always been used as that weapon with each other. So I mean, if it could be separated, then I'm all for it. But I, but your reply, yes, I, I, I'm up for that. That works in my head. Now, 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 the other extreme, of course, is separation does not mean exclusion, Okay. And a lot of the offense, remember I've talked in previous episodes about how everybody's too easily offended and people have a right to do things whether it offends somebody else or not. That's what freedom's all yeah. about. Even okay, Caitlin well, a Jenner lot of this. Attorney. What's that? Even Caitlyn Jenner. 
Even Caitlyn Jenner. Oh, she has <laughs> – no, she she has a – see, here's the thing, Xander. She has the right or he has the right to do that. No question. But I have right. the right as a free human being to point my finger at it and say, no, that's abnormal. You're still a guy to me and not be told I can't speak that or I can't say that or boycott it because of that. Because I have the right to my opinion just the way Absolutely. he or she and has I, the right to do that. And I was saying that tongue in cheek, by the way. I, I thought I'd better just make sure you were aware of that. <laughs> but let me but let me just ask you this because I've not really looked into Governor Pataki. Uh, to George Pataki very much, but but the closest person for me right now, uh, and someone I could vote for, unfortunately, happens to be a Republican, and and that person happens to be uh, Rand Paul, but but still, he's 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 kind of like a front runner for me, but he's but he's not pro gay marriage, but I don't think that makes him homophobic. Well, you know something? I like Rand Paul a lot. I really do. And here's the difference. I originally planned on the show talking about his courageous stance against the Patriot Act, which was courageous, and it was a victory for all Americans, for liberty, that he, at least a day or two, it was a symbolic victory because his colleagues then passed the USA Freedom Act, which is Patriot Act Part 2, essentially, a few yeah. days later. But he did get it to expire, and he stood alone saying, I stand for the American people, for liberty. I don't, I don't report to my colleagues. I report to the American people. And, I, and I'm very happy and grateful that Rand Paul did that. However, Rand Paul, basically his positions change quite often, and he's very divisive. And the thing that got me about Pataki versus Amer uh, versus Rand Paul is this. George Pataki's campaign commercial talked about getting Washington out of our lives. Government had become too big and too powerful. And he said a message that I haven't heard from any of these clowns in the presidential clown car. None of them, including Hillary Clinton, including Sanders on the Democratic side. He talked in his video about we're all Americans. It doesn't matter who we are. It's time for us to unite as a people and make America great again. What unites Absolutely. us is stronger that divides us. And I heard that, and I, I was in tears. I, I was honestly, you could ask Kiko, in tears, because that's the message that we need right now. And every other presidential candidate is for – Rand Paul is great for liberty. I, hey, and I love but, liberty you know, myself. But isn't that what we've been liberty. saying, Tony? Isn't that what we've been saying in the whole time that I've known you and the whole time you've been coming on this show? Isn't this what we have been saying? We've been emphasizing the po the point of left and right uniting because that is what is going to save America. And I, I think that, that it, this is not just about America. The same it can be said for the United Kingdom because because the conservatives and, 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 the, and labor, which is, which is the equivalent of the Democrats, are never going to come together. Are they, Ty? Let's face it. No, it's unlikely. Um, but, I mean, so much has changed here. Um, history has been made, though, in the, in the past few months in, in the UK, certainly in Scotland, um, and, but, but made through honest politicians as well. You know, I mean, the leader of the, uh, of the Scottish National Party here now, um, she was basically honest and said, I won't do this. We will not compromise on that. And, um, and, and here you are. And, and it worked. So, you know, that, that was amazing. Now, Ty, I have a question for you, actually, about something going on in okay. Britain right now that I read online, and maybe you could answer it. It was an article I came across, and it's about oh, <laughs> a, supposed, <laughs> a supposed housing crisis in Britain, and basically the okay. story was there's some communes, type hippie commune livings, in the middle of London that have existed from the 70s, and the developer oh, yeah. corporations are trying to force them out and get rid of them that own it to put housing for the rich and there's not enough housing. Do you know anything about that? Because with all of our problems in America, that kind of resonated. Like it sounds, that could be St. Petersburg or New York City, it sounded like, you know? Yeah. Well, there have been, I mean, I haven't read that particular article, but there has been a community in London I know of. I, you know, I lived in London for 10 years. I've been in Glasgow when I was 15. But um, there has been a particular community in London um, for, yes, yeah, since the 70s, for, yeah, at least 30, 40 years. 
um, living there, and it is prime. It would be considered prime, uh, a prime location. But they have kind of legal rights here, you know. Um, but the uh, for squatting, you know, if you've lived, if you've been somewhere so, for a certain length of time, you know, you had uh, certain rights. But the uh, the lovely Conservative Party, sorry, that um, that we have now, which would be considered your um, <laughs> your uh, not Republicans, yeah, uh, wanted to ah. change all those laws. But they, um, I think they did buy the property. I'm trying to remember. You've caught me on the hop here, Tony. Thanks for that. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they would um, uh, trying to get them out because it would be property that would be worth millions of pounds in the in in the long run. Um, but I don't know whether they'll get them out because what will happen will be that uh, there'll be a huge outcry and people will get together. But if they can if they can manage to buy the land themselves or they can manage to uh, get a court order. Uh, to stay there because because they've been there so long, they may actually win. Mm -hmm. They may actually they may actually win that battle because the, if it's a community, I think you're talking about, they have been there since I think 1971, um, and and it's families that have been there consistently. It's the same families that have been there. Uh, I think there are three families okay. that have been there since 1971. So there are actually there will be three generations there. You, you know um, what's sad about so, that. You know what's really, truly really sad about that? If that was the United States of America, they would simply say it was a terrorist group and they were making weapons and you'd see the police move in and Homeland Secure. I, I'm convinced of this. With the with the situation in America today and how bad yeah. things have become, it would simply, you'd hear on the news, you wouldn't hear about a hippie community. You'd hear about terror, domestic terrorism and the raid yeah. and the support and this and that. And Because that, that, that's the way the government of the United States of America operates today, anything that it doesn't understand or it views as a threat to money, corporations, or to its power, it gets rid of. Yeah. Now, I, I, I yeah, can't, I I can't mean, say that's my personal opinion. I don't, I don't have anything to support that. That's just what I believe, so to speak. But it seems to be that they but would I, say anything they didn't agree with, with, they would call it communism, wouldn't they? Oh, that's, they're communists if, the, if yes, they don't agree. Yes. You're a communist. And, and, Mm -hmm. And and how ter and how terrifying did that become? Yeah, I mean that that was absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the thing that we have now that they didn't have then is the internet, of course. Um, and and all we can do, people like ourselves, all we can do is try and you know highlight things as best we can, and use our voices as best we can. Um, uh, and, you know, and that's it, really. It, it, it is um, it, it do what we can and hope it's not our door to kick it next. <laughs> well, it's it uh, people you know. like us that will affect the change because. There's a terminology nowadays that that's used that that kind of covers all of all three of us, and and they talk about citizen journalists, and it's imperative for the community at large to kind of to to to, to share their opinions on social media, and to say how they feel and to disagree. And unfortunately, you know, like I said, you know, Ty and I were talking about this today. It, it's going to get a hell of a lot worse because in the year running up to um, the election. There's so much misinformation put out there and information that we really don't need to know over and above, you know, what the what the person's policies are that are running and what they intend to do. That we've actually got to we've actually really got to be strong and, and actually fight against that and speak out. Because I think if we don't we just become part of that left versus right machine and it shouldn't be about that it should be about getting the very best person possible to to run the country yeah. not demeaning the other person mm -hmm. as part of it it's become a popularity competition rather than who's best for the job you know if you go for a job on wall street um and there are 10 other people and and and, and they're all as qualified as you your personality is what will win through but you wouldn't expect all all those other 10 people to Turn around and say, well, don't don't give Xander a job because he's gay, or don't give this person a job because their wife uh, has got two speeding tickets, or do, do you know what I mean? I don't like that it gets so dirty. Oh, every year it just gets so damn dirty, and it's not good. Well, and that's why the Pataki video was really a breath of fresh air. I mean, it doesn't matter what candidate it is. I, I, you've heard me compare it over and over again to how many clowns can you fit in the clown car. That, that, right. That's what it is. It's like everybody yeah. with a narrow agenda, and if you don't agree with this particular agenda, I am attacking whoever disagrees with me. And that is what that, – that's going to kill kill what's left 
of America. Okay. Can you share that video, Tony? Is it on your timeline? Because I want to share that with it, people and check it, it out myself. Yes, it, it, yes it, it is on my it is on my timeline. And in fairness, he did gloat a little bit oh, about nine eleven, like Rudy Giuliani did, you know. But he didn't make a big deal of it. I mean, nine eleven was mentioned there, but he didn't mention it like Giuliani did in his campaign. I'm the guy that saved the world. It was more of a I brought people together. Nine eleven showed the best of us. Look, he used 9-11 as an example. I was governor then. That was the worst thing we ever faced. We rebuilt New York. We built a higher tower. It showed our strength as a people. That's a message. I mean, I, I pray that America is still great enough that the underdog who nobody knows with no money and no backing can resonate with a message where people will hear that and say, that's what we need. We need somebody that can bring us together and talk about being great again and the the, I mean, it used to be people would look up to America. Granted, we've always had our haters out there, okay? But I don't Absolutely. think any country in the world right now is looking up to America in any way, whether it's national security or anything. I mean, it, we, we, we aren't looked up to anymore, and we were supposed to be that light shining to the world. Freedom, democracy. Absolutely. With the imperial no, empire, hope. basically, that's collapsing on itself right now. Absolutely, and let and let's hope, and, re, and let's hope that this this really does make a difference because something does uh, have to give. Uh, we we've got to the end of our time. We've gone way over time, Tony, as we always do. Um, I, <laughs> we, I just shared your video. If you could share it on Twitter or share the link, that that would be great, so people can know what what you were referencing. I'll try and put it in the notes on the show page and stuff as well. Um, thank yeah. you once again for joining us, Tony. Tell people where they can find you um, on social media so that they can check you out and come and discuss these things uh, with some civil discourse um, with you in the future. Oh, gosh, I don't know after the Jenner comment if I want to give my immediate address. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for those of you, you can... if you direct message me if you want Tony's home address, uh, to go and, and beat him up and kick him in the nuts. Uh, just DM me and I'll Caitlin will, will be calling you. too. <laughs> yeah, you can Caitlin's find me on come Facebook. Round and and she's gonna she's gonna run away with your nuts in her bag, uh, but only hazel nuts. All right, sorry. Hey, Here if, your Caitlin, social media. if Caitlin if Caitlin showed up at my door, I would shake her hand, possibly hug her, and I'd say. It's too bad you don't have a penis. I'm no longer interested in you. No, I'm kidding. But, he, but she does. That's the difference. She does. She does. I actually she, had to I'm laugh at the, there was a, there was a meme on social media this week of um, Bill Clinton and his daughter. And Bill was looking, and the the the, the quote said, "Hi there, how are you?" And his daughter said, "Dad, it's 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 Bruce Jenner. Just stop now." <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was, was kind of, it, it, it tickled my funny bone. Uh, I'm sorry, Tony. So, okay. uh, if, so if Tony's Tony's yes, um, she, Tony's social media info is on the radio page for today. If you wanna uh, check that out, as as always, we 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 try to emphasize with this show that what is of of, of major importance is that we we don't all have to agree. We have to just re respect the, the the right to to one another's opinions, and I think we always manage to uh, achieve that. Ty and I don't always agree on everything, and Tony and I don't always agree on everything, but we, we still respect one another's, uh, one another's opinions, don't we, bitches? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've never liked you. <laughs> yes. Uh, who are you, anyway? 25 years ago, I'm still talking to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no idea. You just keep calling, I keep answering. Absolutely. So once again, thank you so much uh, to Tony Lusaco for the Lusaco Report. Always something interesting to offer. I hope you come back in a couple of weeks and um, tell thank us you. Uh, uh, about something else that a, you've been you're having a Are you kidding? Are you kidding? What? We are setting this up. I'm not letting it go. The three of us are having the transgender debate, <laughs> boys. I'm telling you. Okay, so <laughs> let's do that show. in two weeks then. Let's do that okay. in two weeks, and we'll have a bigger can segment I do that in two for weeks? it. Hang but, on, hang on. I want to can be I sure Tony is comfortable with that. It yes, it's the time we minute. steer away, not two. Are you sure? Yes. I'm, two com weeks, I'm, two comfortable weeks, with I'm comfortable with the friendly debate in two weeks, yes. 
Oh no, I wanted to be friendly with you, but yeah, I don't want to ambush you, Tony. I just want because what I'm interested in was just your, your opinion, and also I want to get into the science of it. That's what interests me. So that's what we're going to be discussing. But I just thought the three of us. But that's the whole show. We can't possibly do I might, that in, um, in, it would, in ten minutes, fifteen I might minutes. Invite- I might invite Dr. Gina along because she has a, an interesting perspective on, on it, on it all cool. too, which will really kind of, which will invite really invite everybody. It up a little. Absolutely, everybody. And, and you, Caitlin, you if you're listening, give us a call. Too. Absolutely. Uh, so we are out of time. Uh, anyway, sadly, uh, thank you so <laughs> nice much, to Tony. You, Tony. We, we keep digressing. Turn the cycle. Make sure you check it out <laughs> on social media. Thanks again, Tony. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Take care. Take care. That was the fabulous uh, Tony Lusago. Make sure you check him out on Facebook and Twitter. You can find him on Twitter at FullStory2014. Make sure you check him out. And uh, please be kind, or I'll be knocking on your door and running away with your nuts in my pocketbook. Um, That's all we (laughs) have time for today. Thank you to everyone who's taken part. Thanks again to Tony Lusago. Thanks to Ty for being my uh, more than capable co-host. Uh, Thanks to you all for listening. Uh, We will be back with you next week. What are we playing out with, Ty? Uh, Media horse. Right, okay. Can we do that? We didn't do that last week. Do you want to set it up before we say goodbye? No, because I was looking on the list and I couldn't find it. Oh, after Enza, sorry. The reason I'm saying the media... My... my, um, my, uh, it, as usual, my tech has gone down. If anybody out there fancies marrying a, a middle-aged puff, please marry me if you've got money. My technology has gone down again. Uh, my Twitter page has gone down because the Media Whores have just released a new EP and they're on tour at the minute. They're in Lancaster tonight, so good luck, boys. You will be fantastic as always. And they if will be coming on the show at some point. Honestly, they will. We, 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 we are. We, I, was we gonna get them. I was hopefully... Yes, I was hopefully going to get them on for with us for an interview in the next in, in, this week or next week, but they are genuinely on tour. And if you check on Facebook or, or Twitter, you'll see that um, they're really busy. We will get them Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Um, so here with a little glimpse them, of them, their heard. music. This is Affluenza by the Media Whores. We will see you next week. I love you all. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. bye.